hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Good morning, Salt and Light. Hallelujah. This is a good day to worship. This is a good day to say thank you. This is a good day to give God praise. Our way maker, our promise keeper, our light in the darkness. We're here to worship this morning and declare that is who he is. Has he been any of that to you this morning? Come on, I need you to clap your hands. Somebody, I just need a few people over here, about three. I only need about three in this section. I need about three or four over here. I need, to, I, there we go, I gotta, I, there we go. I just need a few people that he's been a way maker for, that he's opened up some doors for, that he's been a promise keeper too. Hallelujah, because I know it's not just me. Hallelujah, he keeps on keeping me, he keeps blessing me, hallelujah. But a lot of us, can, can, we can uh, all relate in some kind of way. Hallelujah, that God has been good to us, that he is a way maker. He's our miracle worker and our promise keeper this morning. Hallelujah, he's been my light in the darkness. Hallelujah, because it's been some dark days. Anybody have some dark nights? Some dark days? But he's been our light. Hallelujah. And he's been the way. So we come to give him honor this morning. Hallelujah. And give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all can sing along with us. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Talk to the Lord. Come on. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. Turn I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, team. You are a Yeah. 
darkness, my God. Hey, woo! Come on, one more time. You are a way maker, miracle worker. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, come on, if he's been all that to you, come on and bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, our light in the darkness, hallelujah, that is who he is. Hallelujah, I bless your name, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We lift you. We give you honor, glory. We give you praise for being all that to us. Hallelujah. You're so amazing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. turned into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you there's none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you there's none like you. Come on, our God is greater. Our God is Come greater. On. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power.
That's it. Come on. Testify to your neighbor. Sing to him. I pray. <laughs>
thank you, Father, for never failing us. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Good morning. Salt and light. Woo. It's good to dance with you. It's good to praise God with you. How many of you know it could have been another way? Oh my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. But God, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Let me do my assignment. Would you please stand for the reading of God's word? Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. I'll be reading from 1 John 3, 1 through 7. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. See what great love, hallelujah, the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are the children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. Glory to God. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. Praise be to God. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone, I'm gonna say it again. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous. Just he is righteous. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. The word said so that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And having done that, there is no way that I will let a rock cry out for me. Somebody ought to give God praise this morning. Knowing what he brought you out of. Knowing where you could have been. Knowing what should have taken you out. There is no way that you ought to sit on your praise this morning. You ain't come here for no other reason than to let God know that he is your God. The, the song said that he is my God, that he is mine, that is personal. I love my God. You ought to let nobody get in the way of doing what your God has called you to do. God, we are here this morning humbly standing at your feet, God. God, just excited to be in your presence one more time, God. God, we thank you because we didn't have to be here this morning, God. But you sent your angels and said, daughter, son, rise and give me the glory. So we are here this morning, God, saying thank you. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for being who you are, God. The song says that, that is who you are. You love us, God, because you don't know what else to do, God. That's just who you are. You save us, God, because you don't know what else to do. That is just who you are. Mercy and grace, God, that is who you are. Kindness and generosity, God, that is just who you are. So, God, we thank you and we praise you for who you are, God. God, we, we just want to make sure that you know how much we love you, God. We want to make sure that there is no doubt in your mind that we are sold out for you, God. So right now, God, have your way in this space, God. Send your spirit to rest on each one of us that we might be set ablaze by your spirit, God. God, we ask that if there is anything in the way of us getting to see you this morning, move it, God. 
If there is anything not like you in this space, God, take it away, God. If there is anything that's going to prevent you from getting your glory, God, we ask that you would burn it in Jesus' name, God, so that everything that comes out of this space might be pleasing in your sight. God, we come to this space, and this is a place of peace for us, God. It's a space of rest, but eventually we will have to leave this sanctuary and go back out into the world, God. So, God, we ask that while we are here, you would recharge us. While we are here, we ask that you would love us, God. While we are here, we ask that you would speak to us and give us direction, God, so that when we go back out to, into a world that does not know you, God, we can still be the salt and the light, God, so that they might see you in everything that we do. We need a word from you, God. We need a word from nobody else but you, God. So, God, if you've got to hurt our feelings, hurt our feelings this morning, God. God, if you've got to make us cry, then send the tears, God. God, if you've got to humble us, then humble us, God, because we need a word from you. So we ask that you would strengthen the preacher for this moment, God, that you would let him know that you stand with him behind this sacred desk. God, we are so blessed that there is a spirit of servanthood in our church, God. God, that you have sent us people who are not concerned with titles and power, God, but surely just serving you, God. And so for every servant leader that is here, God, we say thank you. For everybody that sacrifices and gives of their time, God, we say thank you. Thank you for reminding us of what the church is called to be, God. Thank you for correcting us when we get away from what you've called us to be, God. So there might always be at least one place in this world where people will see you and know that you are real. God, we love you. We love you because you first loved us, God. The only reason we know how to love God is because you've loved us. So God, we invite you to just permeate this space with your love. That you would send peace where peace is needed, God. That you would send hope where hope is needed, God. That you would do for each one of us what we cannot do for ourselves, God. Because that is just who you are. We love you, we praise you, and we ask that you would just do what you do, God. So that you might get the glory in this space. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, we do pray. Amen. Y'all be the choir. Y'all be the choir right now. Come on, sing it like you mean it. For every mountain, you brought me over. You brought me over. For every trial, for every trial, you see me through. You see me through. Yeah, for every blessing. For every blessing. Hallelujah.
I'm glad that y'all just showed that you like to sing, because now it's your chance to sing. Amen. We started this new tradition at least once a month, having a congregational hymn. And this morning, we gather together as a church family, as one big choir, to sing this hymn of the church. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come on, stand on your feet. We're going to sing all four verses, and we're going to sing it with power. Glory to his name. Down at the cross. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to His name. I'm singing glory to His name. Praise His name. I'm singing glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. our Savior, our Redeemer, our Jesus, who indeed lives. As we continue in this Easter tide, in the spirit of resurrection, we celebrate his name today. Let me tell y'all something. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this house. Amen. And I know it is the presence of the Lord. Do me a favor. Give, give the band, give the praise and worship team, give the musicians. Amen. Amen. What a blessing it is. I mean, it's dead serious to come to church every Sunday and not have to guess whether we're going to have a good time or not. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. I walk in here with a sense of anticipation 
and wonder and awe in my spirit. Amen. I don't wonder if we're going to have a good time. I wonder how we're going to do it. Amen. I don't know some Sundays how it's going to jump off. But I thank God. I thank God to have a place where we can worship and bless his name. Amen. If this is your first time here, I hope you're having a good time today as we want to welcome you. If this is your first time worshiping with us here at Salt and Light, you are our guest today. And we want to extend a word of welcome to you. That applies to anyone. If you could please stand and remain standing until you've been officially welcomed. Any first-time visitors in the house today, could you please stand? Any first-time visitors, welcome over here. Welcome, my sister. Anyone else here this morning for the very first time? Anyone else here for the very first time? Amen. All right. To amen. Amen. To everyone who's here for the very first time, we thank God for you. Please remain standing. We want to welcome you today. What a welcome pleasure it is to welcome you into the house. It warms our heart that you are with us today. And we pray that the Spirit of God would move in this place in a way that is meaningful to you. Amen, let, amen, let's let her, amen. God bless you. God bless you, let her have, amen, amen, amen. If you are visiting us away from your church home this morning, we send you home with our prayers and our blessings. But if you're looking for a church home today, please know that our doors are open to you and we would love for you to join us here on the journey of faith. Our ushers have given you a bag. There are many things in that bag, including a card that I would like you to fill out. I just want to send you an email or a letter later on this week just to more formally thank you for being here with us today. So like, do me a favor, turn to our guests and turn to one another. Let someone know we're happy and excited and blessed to see you in the house today. Amen. Amen. We also want to say welcome Welcome to our newest members that joined us on last Sunday. In the Mount Airy service, Robert Brown and Lynetta Williams joined us last Sunday. Amen. And then here in Southwest, if you're here, could you please stand? George Garfield, Brenda Myrick Murray, Kathleen Dwyer, and Diane Joe all became new members of our church. We welcome you. We welcome you and we thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for you as we welcome you to the Salt and Light family. We also want to say congratulations to four individuals that completed their new members classes and we want to give them their Salt and Light Bible today. Evangelist Shirley Mercer, you can come on down. Uh, Samuel Batty, Brother Beatty, welcome. Uh, Patrice Robinson finished her classes and Kia, Kia Wilder also finished her classes. Congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations, amen, congratulations to all of you. Just a couple of quick additional announcements. Um, remember coming up this Saturday to all of our sisters, we are gathering for one of our holy rest, the annual time that we come together as a church as we celebrate women, we celebrate all the work that you do, but we wanna give you a chance to rest, a chance to spend time recharging your batteries, a chance to spend time with one another, and in this way, a chance to spend time in nature. And so we will be at the John Hines Wildlife Reserve, a gift here in the Southwest Philadelphia area at 9.30 a.m. If you have not registered, you can do so after service. There will be someone in the Greenway that you can register for our young ladies, our sisters. We really want you to join us this Saturday for Holy Rest. On this coming Sunday, April 21st, we will be honoring the 10th anniversary of the Common Place and celebrating all the work that came into making this idea, this thought, this vision of reality. The reason that we are in this building right now is that 10 years ago, some people had a vision for what the Lord can do in this space. You may not realize this having been here now, but 10 years ago, this building was on its way to being condemned. The church that was worshiping in here had moved down the street. They were worshiping at the 58th Street campus, but the Lord moved in somebody's heart, amen. And somebody had a vision for the work of the Commonplace, the after-school program, the work that the Commonplace does with young people, the summer camp, and all the work that they do with young people and families in this community, and the partnership that they have with us as a church, and all that we are able to do together to be a blessing. And so next Sunday, on the 10th anniversary of all that work, we're going to honor those that made that work possible. We're going to thank God for the staff of the Commonplace, including our own executive pastor and the executive director of the Commonplace, Pastor Christopher Holland. And so please, please be here next Sunday as we celebrate them and thank God for all that they're doing. The young people want me to let you know that next, not next Saturday, but two Saturdays from now on the 27th, they are having an open mic, their first annual young youth ministry open mic. 
but the open mic is open to everybody. It's not just open to the young people, but anyone that has a poem, if you got a song, if you got a rap that you can do at church, amen, uh, then, then the mic is open to you. I know there's some old hair rappers out there. I know y'all out there, amen. And so if you've got anything that you would like to share during the open mic, this is your chance. This is your chance. If you told yourself, if I could just get my hands on the microphone, Lord have mercy, then this is an open mic. We would love to hear what the Lord has laid on your heart. We would love to hear your gift. We would love to hear what you would like to share. That will be starting at 10 a.m. Saturday, April 27, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we invite everyone to join us on that day. On that same Sunday, April 28th, our seniors will be gathering for a senior ministry meet, greet, and pray. That'll be immediately following the 1030 service. And so for everyone 60 and over, our senior ministry, uh, we want to invite you, amen, we want to invite you to come on Sunday. I'm on my way there, brother, believe me. We want to invite you to come on Sunday, April the 28th. To our sisters, the Women's Symposium, be well, sister, be well. Friday at 7 p.m., Friday at 7 p.m. on May the 3rd, we are going to have one of the great gems. This is somebody's preacher. Believe me, sisters, you don't want to miss this service. Reverend Danielle Brown uh, from New Jersey is going to take the train down here to Philadelphia, and she'll be preaching for us that day. That'll be an all-women's service. We are inviting all of our sisters, and sisters, please invite somebody to come and to be here with you. We will be here gathering with our sisters. Everything that we will have that Friday evening will be from our sisters. The entire band, we have an all women's band, all women's praise and worship team. Everybody in the congregation will be our sisters. And we're gonna fill this house with women as we thank God for wellness and wholeness in our sisters. And then that Saturday, we'll be gathering early in the morning at 9 a.m. going to 4 p.m. with workshops and, and symposiums and ways in which we'll be sharing with one another and we are encouraging you to be here. If you have not registered yet, you can also register for the Spring Women's Symposium in the Greenway immediately following service. I announced this last Sunday, but I say to you again that Dr. Baker is organizing a support group for those that are dealing with cancer. This support group is not just for those that are in the throes of dealing with it right now, but if you have been blessed to ring a bell anywhere, if you've been blessed to hear a doctor say to you, you are now cancer-free, then we invite you to be a part of this symposium as our sisters and brothers come together, amen, to share with one another. I thank God for the nimble work of the church. We're not the kind of church where we got to wait seven months to have eight committees meet before we do anything. But when we recognize an issue, we react to it right away. And Dr. Baker said, Reverend, it's obvious that there are many among us that are dealing with cancer right now. And as a part of the Bethesda's Pool Ministry, we want to take a moment to do this work. And so we want to invite anyone whom this ministry would be a blessing for you, whether you are a member of Salt, or Light or, Salt or Light and Light or not, to join us, amen, for this ministry. I want to just thank God. Y'all just have, I was about to run this morning. When I saw Sister Gina over there, she couldn't come stand up, but she's singing her part, amen, over in the pews. Still dealing, still going through weekly, weekly therapy, still pressing, still believing, still trusting, still praying, still knowing that God is indeed able, amen. Y'all don't know, sometimes just coming to church is a testimony all by itself, amen. Sometimes just showing up, hallelujah, God is a testimony. And so if this would be a blessing for you, we want to ask you to be a part of this ministry. I'm going to make this announcement myself this morning because I want you to consider this your own personal invitation from me to join us on Friday, May 24th for my 50th birthday party. Amen. This is my invitation. This is my invitation to you. Now listen, I got some calls this week from some people, and I appreciate your heart who were like, Pastor, we think that this ought to be a big banquet and we ought to have it in a banquet hall. I appreciate that. I understand your heart. And don't think that that was not considered. But here's the reality of that situation. If we do this in a place like that, it's going to cost us $80, 90 $100 a plate, and then we would have to charge for people to be there. You all know me, and if you know me, you know this. I want everyone to be at this party. I don't want anyone not to be able to come because you can't afford to come. I want you to bring all your kids. Amen. Bring the whole family. And the only place I know that we can go for free 
and where everybody can come is right here at the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the party's going to be right here. We're going to shut this whole area down. We're going to be outside, weather permitting. We're going to put some lights up outside, and we're going to have an absolutely fantastic party. The Bible says that every 50 years is a year of jubilee. Amen. And this is my jubilee year, and I'm asking you to join me. I'm asking you to join me. We've been very, very specific in the way that we plan this. We're going to have activities for the kids. We're going to have a barbecue. There's some folk that's coming. Nobody's got to cook. We're not going to have, I want everybody to have fun. We got somebody coming in. They're going to do all the food. They sent us samples of it. It's good. Trust me. Amen. So, so we want you to be here. We need you to RSVP, though, so that we know how many people to expect. So please let us know if you're coming. We'll have some bounce houses for the children. We're going to have the whole area set up. We're going to have a dance floor. We're going to dance. Oh, I don't dance, but for those of y'all that do dance, and not because I'm all saved like that, I just can't. Amen. Just understand. If, if I could dance, I would. Amen. But I can't, so I don't even try no more. And, and you, if you all know why, I'm, I'm going to call somebody out. Our, our 10th anniversary celebration at Saw in Light, we had a dance floor and we were dancing. And I'm calling you out, Renea, because Renea took a video of me dancing and posted it on Facebook. And I have not danced in public since then. It was that bad. It was that bad. It was bad. So, so I'm just going to two-step. Amen. That's all I got. Amen. Two-step. Um, but we're going to have a good time. There will be card tables set up. Amen. All the pinochle players, we're going to have a table for y'all. Amen. All the bid whist players, we're going to have a table for y'all. I know y'all ain't that saved. Amen. Y'all know y'all play. Amen. And if you play spades, meet me at the spades table. Amen. I will see you there. I will see you there. Amen. Amen. Don't bring no mess now. We don't play around with that. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to be pastor that night. Amen. I'm going to... Amen. But please, please come on out. We're going to have a good time. And I'm hoping that you're going to be able to join us on that night. Today as we move on, we're going to move on, but there's one last thing we need to do today. Through the throes of COVID and as we as Salt and Light have come together as a church, we have been blessed by so many individuals who have poured their heart into this work. But today we want to specifically honor our deacons. Amen? Our deacons have done a fantastic job. We are blessed here to have a group of deacons that have dedicated themselves to doing the work of the church as Acts chapter 6 tells us to do so. In Acts chapter 6, the Lord told the disciples, told the apostles to choose men and women in our, in our modern vernacular who are able to meet the needs of the people. Deacons are critical to the life of the church. And you all know in this church, deacon isn't just something you put on your name. We don't walk around here with big deacon badges walking around saying this is who we are, but our deacons work. They are doing the work of the church. They work in security. They work in communion. When you are sick and shut in, if you let us know, and our deacons will bring communion to you. They will make sure that you are not alone. They make sure that the van gets out every Sunday and goes to pick up those who need to be picked up. And so we want to honor them and thank them for their work. I'm going to call the ones that I think are here this morning up. Some of them, we, we, our deacons are so dedicated to this that there are some of our deacons that are no longer with us here physically present. But you know, we are the virtual church now. So we have some of our deacons that live a great distance now, and they're not able to come to church every Sunday, but they came today to be a part of this work and so that we can honor them for their work that they're doing. So let me call these deacons up. You can come as I call your name. Uh, Tim Darby, uh, Lil Ert, Florence Stuttered, if you could come. His, his mom, if you, uh, Deacon Florence, if you could come. Deacon Florence Stuttered, if you could come. Mimos, uh, Brenda Taylor, I don't know if she's here this morning. Deacon George Tillman, Deacon Orson Brown, Deacon Tracy Morris, Deacon Kelvin Clark, Deacon Brian Dickerson, Deacon Al Douglas, Deacon Lil Earp, I say her name, Junior Deacon Elisha Holland, Deacon Amy Holland is not here, and Deacon Ann Horsey, Deacon Lorraine Outerbridge, Deacon Roy Outerbridge, Deacon Louise Phillip, Deacon Emma Robinson, Deacon Ben Stewart, Deacon Jeff Stuckey, Deacon Kevin Young. Did I miss anybody? Amen. Deacon Sam, Deacon Sam, please come. Billy Butler. Billy Butler. Deacon Billy Butler, Deacon Billy's here. Deacon Billy Butler, if you could come up. Amen. Amen. 
Salt and Light, these are your deacons. Let's give our deacons a hand as we thank God for them. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we appreciate you all. Meet me on the steps of the church after church. We're going to take a quick picture. Amen. We are now going to have the moments of meditation and then the morning message. If you have not registered for the birthday party, you can register in the green way after service. Oh, children. I'm sorry. We just, we just going at it today. Children, you are dismissed to go to Children's Church. When y'all get there, please tell the children's church leader, I'm sorry I dismissed y'all late. Amen. They're going to be mad at me. Praise the Lord. Children, you are dismissed now to go to children's church.
honor our way-making, mountain-moving God, who has indeed supplied all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Let's look to the hills from it cometh our help, knowing that all of our help comes from the Lord who created heaven and earth. God, we thank you today. We bless you with the fruit of our lips. What a wonderful time, Lord, we've spent in your presence. But now, Lord, as you have been with us through the entirety of this service, tarry with us just a little bit longer for we need a word from the Lord today someone Lord walks into this space desperately needing to know that they are not by themselves that they are not walking this journey by themselves and so Lord speak to us and speak through us that the words of our mouth the meditation of our heart might be acceptable in your sight our strength and our Redeemer in your son Jesus name we pray amen Give all honor and praise this morning to God, who is our Father, our Mother, our Creator, to Christ, our Elder Brother, and our Redeemer, and to the Holy Spirit in whom we live, move, and have our being. 
This morning, Salt and Light, I want to direct you to a section of Scripture, one of those times when the Lord dropped this into my spirit, honestly, about two months ago, and I've been sitting on this text waiting for the right Sunday. I felt like this was it. Amen. And at 8 a.m., sometimes it just takes one person, and there was one person at the end of 8 a.m. that came and gave me her testimony, signifying to me that this was the right Sunday and the right word. Joshua chapter 14, I want to begin in the 6th verse and read through the 14th verses. Joshua chapter 14, beginning in verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know that the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy on the land, and I brought back to him as it w- word as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord your God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old. And yet, I am as strong today as the day that Moses sent me, just sent me in coming and sent me just, oh, Lord have mercy, sent me just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war both going out and coming in. I'm reading like I'm 85 years old. (laughs) Now, therefore, give me this mountain, of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Now Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb the son of Jephunneh as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance to Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kizanite to this day because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Look again with me just briefly at verse 12. Now therefore give me this mountain. Life has taught me this very simple lesson. Everyone has a story. You're gathered with us this morning, I promise you, there are as many stories in this sanctuary as there, is, uh, as there are bottoms in the pews, everybody has a story. You oftentimes can't tell anybody's story by just looking at them. We all present ourselves very well, we all show ourselves to be doing well, but the fact of the matter is, when we take off all this makeup, we can really see the messed up lives and the stories that some of us have come from. You can't tell anything about anybody just by looking at them. If you really want to understand what someone's going through, you need to hear their story. And today we meet a young man by the name of Caleb. And while his story that I just read for you this morning is incredible, to really get where he is at 85 years old, you got to go back and meet Caleb in the beginning. First time we meet Caleb in the Bible is during that period of time when the children of Israel are wandering in the wilderness having been liberated from slavery in Egypt. For 430 years, they struggled in the flesh pots of Egypt until God heard their cries, went down to Ethiopia and called a man named Moses and said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh was so moved by God's ten plagues that he told them to get out right away without even time to put yeast in their bread. The children of Israel have left the land of slavery, and that wasn't just enough for God. He didn't just deliver them from slavery. He then gave them a land of promise for them to dwell in. Because I don't know about your God, but that's just how my God works. He doesn't just deliver you from something, but he also prepares something for you to walk into. It's not enough just for God to deliver us. This is what's good about God. He won't just bring you out. He'll also bring you in. He won't just bring you out of situations and bring you out of mess, but God will always have something for you to walk into when he brings you out. Here's the problem with us. Lord, have mercy. God will do the work of delivering you, but you've got to do the work of walking in. If God is going to deliver 
deliver you from some stuff. He will bring you out of it. He will make sure you are free. But you've got to make up in your own mind that you are prepared to walk into the new and wonderful thing that God has for you. And far too often, we sit outside the promised land of God instead of walking firmly into what God has for us. Do you know how many people I know right now are looking into the land but refuse to walk into the land, waiting for God to do all the work. God can't do everything. You've got to do some stuff for yourself. And at some point, you've got to decide in your life, God, thank you for delivering me from the mess, but I will walk into the new land. God brought them out, and here they are, prepared to walk into this land that God has for them. And then in Numbers chapter 13, God tells Moses, go to all 12 of the tribes and have each tribe appoint one young man that will go spy on the land. So all the 12 tribes of Israel appoint one. The tribe of Ephraim appointed a name that will be familiar to you, that is Joshua. And it is the tribe of Judah that appointed a young man named Caleb. This is the first time we see Caleb in the text as his tribe says, we trust you to go look into the land that God promised us and tell us what the land looks like. For 40 days, 12, 12 spies went and looked at the land, and then they came back and made their report. When they came back, they said, the land is exactly the way God told us it would be. The land is flowing with milk and honey. They came back carrying bundles of grapes, bushes of grapes that were so big that no one man could carry them by themselves. There were pomegranate and date trees. There were blessings all over the land. They said, in this land, we will prosper. In this land, we will eat well. In this land, we will water our herds. In this land, our sheep will be taken care of. This is a good and plentiful land. All 12 of them said that, but then 10 of them had another report. 10 of them said, but here's the problem. There are giants dwelling in the land. The people that dwell in the land are a strong and mighty people, and we don't think we'll be able to defeat them. In fact, they went further than that. They said, when they look at us, they see grasshoppers, and when we look at ourselves, we see grasshoppers. And let me rest here just for a minute and suggest to you today that one of the reasons far too many of us have yet to walk into what God has for us is not about how they see you, it's about how you see yourself. You don't see yourself as more than a grasshopper. And as long as you see yourself as less than, you will always be less than. It's called self-esteem because it's how you see yourself. You've got to see yourself as strong and mighty and blessed and favored to know that you can walk into the land that God has for you. As long as you see yourself as less than God sees you, as long as you think you're a grasshopper, you're going to walk like a grasshopper. You're going to walk like a grasshopper. You're going to talk like a grasshopper. You're going to work like a grasshopper. You will be jumping to conclusions instead of trusting God for what God said he could do. Some of y'all going to get that later. There is nothing worse than when grasshoppers jump to conclusions. And don't give God credit for what God told you he's going to do in your life. And at some point in your life, you've got to decide how you see you, how you think about you, how you know yourself to be. This is one thing that hurt me more than anything else when I was in the classroom. To meet young people who were dripping with potential and possibility. But for the majority of their lives, somebody had told them what they could not do. And so even to hear their own teacher try to speak something into their life, because they had heard so many negative words, they wanted to tell me what they could not do. I would literally say to them, listen, you were doing a wonderful job at calculating functions. Next year, you need to take AP calculus. Mr. James, I can't do that. I'm not AP material. You are a leader. I watch how children follow behind you. You need to run for class president or school president. Oh, Mr. James, that's not what, what I'm supposed to do. I, I'm, I'm not that kind of leader. You, you have college material already in your brain. You are smart. You are wonderful. You are gifted. You don't just need to go to college. You need to go to grad school, med school, law school. Oh, no, Mr. James, nobody in my family has ever done that. We will begin to see ourselves as less than what God has for us. Our own low self-worth and low self-outlet will keep us from going into what God has. And here we are walking around the promised land, looking in the promised land because you think you're not enough. And I need somebody here today to stand on a firm foundation and say, I I wish I would prevent myself from going in based on how I see me. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know who made me. I know who created me. I know what he put in me. 
I am somebody. I'm going to stand on the word of God and walk into what God has for me. Ten of them said we can't do it, but thank God for the minority report. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb said we are more than able to possess the land. If God said it's for us, it is for us. If God gave it to us, we better walk into it. And I want to know who are the Joshua and Caleb in here this morning. Who are the people in here this morning that are determined that everything God said about you is true? Who's determined to walk into your land, to stand on your land, to praise in your land, to worship in your land? I refuse to let the enemy keep me from my inheritance. I refuse to let the enemy keep me from what God has for me. I will walk in my land. How long you going to keep looking at your land? How long you going to keep walking around your land? How long are you going to keep from going into your land when you can have it right now? If you believe it, if you stand on it, if you trust him for it, The children of Israel stood outside the land for 40 years because they didn't believe. Listen to me. Joshua and Caleb did believe, but they still had to wait with everybody else because they didn't believe. And I like y'all a lot, but I don't like none of y'all enough to wait 40 years to get what God has for me. You better come on with me. In fact, the old folk used to say, if you won't go, don't hinder me, because I'm going to get every good thing that God has for me. I ain't going to stand around waiting on y'all to catch up with what God said. Walk firmly. Fast forward with me 45 years. <laughs> Caleb is now 85 years old. Children of Israel have now taken possession of the land. Yeah. Moses went up on a mountain one day and just walked on up to heaven. Joshua is now the leader of the nation. Caleb now has to go to Joshua because Joshua is deciding who's going to get what appointments in the land. Who is going to possess and what families will get certain parts of the land. And I need you to see right here because Caleb is about to give a master class on how to get what God has for you. Do what Caleb did and you will get what Caleb got. Listen to me, the first thing he does is he points out the obvious. He says, I'm 85 years old. Now, you may think that Caleb actually just gave Joshua a reason not to give him the land because why would you give prime real estate to an 85-year-old man? Why would you give the best parcel of land to an 85-year-old man? But I love Caleb's gangster because Caleb decided it don't matter how old I am, I'm coming to get what God has for me. I need somebody to hear that today. Listen, stop giving God excuses on why he shouldn't do it and stand on who God is in your life. Age is just an excuse. We got too many people, I'm too old. I'm too young, I'm too poor, I'm too broke, I don't have the right degrees. Stop telling God what God can't do because of your situation and start telling your situation what God can do. I hear God saying to somebody right now, if you lay your excuses aside, I actually can do something with you. You stop telling me why I can't do it and why it can't be done and how I can't use you Everybody God has ever used had excuses. Everybody God has ever used was too so much of something, and God used them anyway. In fact, here's how you know it was God. Only God could take somebody with all the excuses that we got and still use them. In fact, that's how it shows that it's God. God says, I don't want to use you not because you have excuses. I'm going to use you in spite of your excuses because your excuses show the world it was me that did it. Everybody is too something. Noah liked to drink too much, Abraham was too old, Jacob lied too much, Leah was too ugly, Moses stuttered too much, Gideon was too afraid, Samson was too whipped, David had a lot of things he did too much, Hezekiah was too sick, Elijah was too depressed, Jeremiah cried too much, Mary and Timothy were too young, Peter was too uncivilized, 
Martha was too worried, Zacchaeus was too small, and Lazarus was too dead, and he still used them. What's your excuse? Caleb said, I'm 85 years old, and I'm still as strong as I was 45 years ago. Listen to me, somebody needs to hear this. Age is not a reason for you not to get busy doing what God told you to do. And I mean too young or too old. God can use you wherever you are on the continuum if you let him. If you stop telling God what you can't do and start standing on what you can do, leave the excuses aside. Caleb says, I'm 85 years old. Here's the part I love the most. And he said, and I'm still ready to fight. <laughs> I'm 85 years old and I'm still as strong as I was 45 years ago. I don't know who told you that you ever gonna possess your land without a fight, but you need to tell them they lied to you. Anybody who told you that you are going to walk into what God has for you without a fight, lie to you. If you're going to get into it, you got to be ready to fight. you got to fight for what's yours. you got to fight with what God has for you. you got to fight for your blessing. You're not just going to walk in there without a fight because the Bible says that we have an enemy and our enemy roams around, roaring and looking for who we can destroy. You must be prepared to fight. Everything in your life that is worth having is worth fighting for. Your sanity is worth fighting for. Your children are worth fighting for. Your heart is worth fighting for. Your faith is worth fighting for. Your anointing is worth fighting for. The blessings of the Lord are worth fighting for. Your community is worth fighting for. If you're going to walk in it, you gotta realize it's worth fighting for. How can an 85 year old say I'm still prepared to fight. Maybe it's because Caleb knew that most of the battles that matter in this life are not fought in a physical world. Maybe it's because Caleb knew that the battles that matter in this life are those that are fought not in flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities in high places. Maybe Caleb knew that the real battles are not fisticuffs, but are fought when your knees hit the ground because the real battles are fought in prayer. And I need somebody to know today, you might be 85 years old, but you can still pray. <laughs> you can still fall on your knees. You can still call on the name of the Lord. You can still shout Hosanna. Every time you pray, you're fighting. Where are the prayer warriors at today? Where are the prayer warriors at today? Where are the prayer warriors at today? I'm going to help myself out. Where are the prayer warriors at today? Where are those that know that God is more than able? I'm 40, but I can still pray. I'm 50, but I can still call the name of the Lord. I'm 60, but I can still lift holy hands. I'm 70, but I can still lay on my face. I'm 80, but I can still call on the anointing of the Lord. Battles are fought in prayer. Battles are fought in worship. Battles are fought trusting and believing, even at 85. I'm 85 years old. I'm an old man now, but I still got energy to fight. I still believe that I can handle whatever problem exists in this land. Here's my final point. I'm going to sit down. Caleb says, now give me this mountain. <laughs> he didn't say give me a rocking chair. He didn't say give me a retirement home. He said give me this mountain. If you're going to get what God has for you, you better learn how to open your mouth and ask for it. Give me this mountain. Give me more joy. Give me more peace. Give me your anointing. Give me more love. Give me more, more of all the gifts, Lord. Give me this. The Bible says, you receive not because you ask not. If you want it, you better throw your head back and open your mouth and say, give it to me right now. Give it to me right now. Give me your healing. Give me your blessing. Put your hand on me. Give me this mountain. Give me more favor. Give me more 
more grace. Give me more mercy. Give me this mountain. Whenever you came in here this morning and you do not have, you better ask for it right now. I'm not going to leave here today without letting the Lord know exactly what I need from him. Listen, listen, don't ask for it, demand it. He didn't say, can I please have this mountain? He said, give me what's rightfully mine because the Lord already gave it to me. Sometimes you got to come to church and stand and say, give it to me. I claim it in the name of Jesus. I don't care who's trying to keep me from it. If the Lord said it, I will stand on claiming my right to the mountain. But before I sit down, I got to tell you about one more person that said, give me this mountain. Leave the Old Testament and meet me in the New Testament and find a man named Jesus. And Jesus said, give me this mountain. There was a hill far away where there stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. But I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. I thank God that Jesus said, give me the mountain. Give me the nails. Give me the cross. Give me the thorns. Give me the grave. And then give me victory. Give me. Somebody today needs to claim your mountain. Somebody today needs to claim your mountain. Stop letting the excuses of the enemy, hallelujah God, keep you from what the Lord has for you. This morning, I want you with a firm voice to say, God, give it to me. Say, listen, give it all to me. I want every last drop of it. Don't keep any piece of it away from me. God, if it's my mountain, give me the mountain. Give it to me, Lord. Give it to me right now. I trust you, God. I trust that you are true to your word. I trust that everything you said you were going to do, you're going to do it. Lord, give me this mountain. There's a mountain you need to stand on this morning, church, and that is the mountain of salvation. If you're not here today, listen, there is one last mountain that you're going to go to one day. There's a mountain that has been prepared for you, a mountain that God shed his own blood, that you would have access and a right to a mountain called heaven. Somebody today needs to lay hold of and lay claim of the mountain that God has for you. If you're worshiping with us this morning, as we all stand to our feet, and you have yet to claim your mountain, you can do so right now. Right now, you can claim it, you can believe it, you can own it, you can trust God for it, and you can say, give me this mountain. Somebody needs to get saved today. Somebody needs to claim your mountain today. Don't leave here today without claiming the right that you have as a believer, the right that you have as someone that knows the Lord. You have the right to a mountain. And this morning, that mountain is available to you. Who this morning wants to come and be saved? The doors of the church are open, both in person and virtual. Somebody come and claim your mountain today.
claim your mountain, to claim your peace, to claim your joy, to claim your anointing. down this morning. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for these two. Praise the Lord for you, my sister, my brother. Amen. Coming this morning to claim your mountain. What an honor and a privilege it is whenever someone comes and says, I want to give life to Jesus Christ. I want to become a part of the fellowship of believers in the body of Christ. We thank God for you today. We honor you today. You have made the best decision you'll ever make in your life to, to surrender yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are praying for you. We are praying your strength in the Lord that God will continue to walk with you on this Christian journey. Amen. Our counselors are going to take you now to give you some more instruction. Let's put our hands together and thank God for this sister and brother that come this morning. Bless the name of the Lord today. It's giving time. Amen, church. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah, Lord. I refuse to live the valley when the Lord told me I got a mountain with my name on it. Are you kidding me? I am going to stand firmly and confidently in everything that God has said about me. Here is one of the responsibilities that we have once God has given us anything the responsibility of returning a portion of it back to him. God gives us everything and asks us to turn, return back to him a tenth of tithe of what he's given to us. And God says, watch me and see if you will not be dutiful and obedient in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing into your life that you will not have room enough to receive. We serve a God that is more than able to give us more than enough. Tithing is done through obedience to God's word. Tithing is done by trusting God. That if he brought it to you this week, Lord have mercy, he can give you even more next week. Tithing says, I trust you, God, that if I will be obedient, if I will honor your word, that I know that you will open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing into my life that I will not have room enough to receive. If you're not a tither, I want you to consider it right now. I want you to talk to the Lord. And see if he is not calling you to a place of obedience, not just in the word, not just in your work, not just in your hands, but even in our finances, even in our time, even in our talent, that we ought to give the right proportion unto God. Lord, we trust you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us, even in this hour that we've been worshiping. Now, Lord, we pray by the mercies of God that you would rest your spirit upon your people as we return our gifts back to you. Bless right now, Lord, the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
If you're giving electronically, you will see the information on your screen. Let us come now and bring our gifts unto the Lord. God, Lord, we offer you a word of thanksgiving for the generosity in the hearts of your people as we give bow to you. Bless, Lord, these gifts and bless those who have given. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Bible gives us these instructions in the book of Hebrews. Be mindful of how you entertain strangers because some have entertained angels unaware. And now unto he who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine. Say this with me. I am the salt of the earth, and I am the light of the world. May they rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth and forevermore. Together, church, let us say amen, amen, and amen.